Today, I am meeting with Sebastian Pitzler. Hi, good morning. Sebastian is the managing director of InsuLab Germany, a leading tech accelerator for startups wanting to enter the German markets via Cologne. Sebastian and I know each other for over three to four years through the launch of the lab in Cologne and my early involvement, actually, Sebastian, you probably don't know that, but in supporting the tech ecosystem piece of marketing research before the lab was launched in 2017. Before moving to the other side of the coin, Sebastian worked for a very well-known insurance company called Ergo, a subsidiary of Minicre. Sebastian has a background in technology strategy, board management, and digital lab development. I'm so lucky to have Sebastian with us today. Welcome, Sebastian. Sabine, it's my pleasure to be here, and it's always great to talk with you as InsurTech enthusiast and Mrs. InsurTech Europe, right? <laughs> Thank you very much for your invitation today. My pleasure. And uh, well, InsurTech Europe, you know, I take a little bit of every market because I think <laughs> today that's only the way we can grow together. That's great. It's a great community of enthusiasts, right? Tech lovers, insurance lovers, and always about thinking about ideas, how we can, let me say, develop our industry furthermore, right? Correct. So my first question, Sebastian. We want to know who you are. You know, that was a little introduction about you, but we want to know who you are and what makes you move from working from a really well-renowned incumbent player in Germany and in a number of countries to a well-known and respected accelerator, which actually you shaped, right, for the past three years. Thank you, Sabine. And what, what should I say? You've been already pretty well informed. There was a lot of information already in your introduction. So my name is Sebastian Pitzler. I'm um, right now the Managing Director of InsurLab Germany. As you have mentioned before, I've used to work with the Ergo Insurance Group, which is part of Munich Re, which was a great time for me. Right now, I'm 40 years old and I'm since 20 years was in the insurance industry. Um, 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 but the thing is, I'm not the classical insurance guy. I'm really more the tech enthusiast and the tech lover. Uh, I've used to work on the IT department side at the, the beginning, 20 years ago, so to say. And then I have more and more specialized myself over the years into the direction of IT strategy development, into the direction of innovation management and digitalization. And before I have left Ergo, I was responsible to build and lead the Ergo Digital Lab in the startup ecosystem of Berlin. And then um, in a point of time, I've realized that in Cologne, there was a pretty cool initiative uh, up, uh, up for, let me say, um, the setup phase uh, where you have been also involved. And then I've said, hey, uh, I'm since 16 years with a great incumbent in the German market. I'm in Berlin, which is great. But if there's a new uh, initiative built in Cologne with an, uh, let me say, task for the entire German insurtech market, that's a great opportunity for myself to further grow and develop. On the one hand, the InsurLab Germany and also myself. I had a great network within the Ergo and uh, Munich Re Group. But I have also seen the great opportunity to build such an initiative from the scratch and uh, grow the network for InsurLab Germany and also myself. And what should I say? I'm with InsurLab Germany since almost four years. It has been an incredible journey so far. I we have made uh, we have met so many great startups incumbents who are willing to join forces to work on innovation and digitalization. And right now you see, I come from my own personal development into right into the topic because I'm uh, really an enthusiast on, on things we are doing. I'm really thrilled that it's our task to join forces between startups and incumbents, leading service providers, universities, really to grow and develop our industry in the direction of customer centricity, digitalization, and of course, future readiness. And I think there's a lot to do, but yeah, sorry. I, I came from my personal introduction into the topic. So uh, I, I love what I do. I hope that you can also feel it and, and hear it right now. And um, 
it's a great point in time to work on this topic. When I've started the Ergo Digital Lab in Berlin, there was no frame, uh, no, no phrase or term like InsureTech. It was back in 2015. The first people were talking about FinTech slowly and InsureTech was not determined that point of time. And I think the InsureTech ecosystem and market has grown so strong since that point in time. And it's such a vibrant industry right now, right? A lot of actors, a lot of um, money in the market, interests, startups, companies. It's really great to see how this ecosystem has evolved and that players like you, Sabine, and me can do so much in the market uh, on the interface between startups and incumbents what's uh, really let me say valuable and meaningful for me yeah i mean you have actually already highlighted a few things where you know when we decided to move from working for big companies to supporting the startup ecosystems you never know what will happen but it's like being educated every day realizing that there are so many people with amazing ideas but also bring those ideas into viable concepts, yep. which is so exciting. We have to work really hard every day to actually make a difference for those companies because they work really fast themselves, right? Exactly. And also we are learning with our industry to make it better, faster yep. and cheaper at the end of the day for the end customers. Absolutely. And I think within our industry, there have, has been a great mind shift within the last five to six years, right? When I was responsible for the lab in Berlin, at the beginning, it was hard to, to talk with the procurement department to uh, create a, a contract between a startup and an incumbent. And uh, the insurance industry was coming from an IT background, which was, you know, focused on um, big old programming languages like COBOL, and they were coming from self-development, self-developed software solutions. That was the first wave of IT development in the insurance companies. Then the second wave was something like, hey, we're using uh, standard software like Microsoft, SAP and others. And the next big step was we are open to work and collaborate with startups. And that, I think, in the, within the last five to six years, this development changed a lot and I think this development was only made within the last five to six years that incumbents are open to collaborate with startups and use their solutions and go also uh, let me say a kind of risk to cooperate with a company which is young which don't has a big track record and balance sheet and stuff and I think this was also great to let me say support to develop and create and what you have said, right? What what's, uh, motivates us to to get up every morning and and bring the cool parts together, right? You have mentioned a few things as well earlier, which is you know when we started, there were probably a thousand ventures interested in insurance. Today, there is based on my latest numbers around six thousand insurtechs. Mm-hmm. I would say you know around thousand five hundred received investment, and this year probably the best year ever for InsurTech mm-hmm. investment. 15 billion has been invested in InsurTech startup twice as much as last year. So Excellent. to show there's an interest, right? Absolutely, yeah. And I think that's also, on the one hand, it's a great development, right? To see that the numbers are doubling for the startups investments, because I think there are two or three trends coming together. On the one hand, the willingness and acceptance to support startups and the, the let me say management attention that investments are necessary to build this and grow this startup ecosystem uh, and the other um, thing is really to see that startups are able to help and find a problem solution fit also on a short term uh, that's something we have realized as in Chile with Germany during this kind of uh, corona or COVID-19 pandemic um, we have seen or we had been able to create a lot of win-win situations and new success stories where we could demonstrate that a startup solution could help to, let me say, overcome a bottleneck of internal IT capacity. During the pandemic situation, it was necessary to overcome social distancing via or via digital solutions. 
And that was great to show and demonstrate how powerful our network is really to match the people to, let me say, to, to do the matchmaking between startups and incumbents to overcome social distancing, to provide there is a value in the IT solutions from startups. And I think this is also a reason why the investments has grown that kind of rapidly and significantly. Yeah. So I'm sure our listener would love to hear a little bit more about what you do every day, Sebastian, right? As a managing director of a very well-renowned acceleration program, you know, you attract companies from all around Europe, but internationally, I've talked to many of them, you know, some, some gem. And by the way, Demo Day was just a few days ago. <laughs> and please give us some of the numbers you have achieved this year too. Thank you very much, Sabine. On the one hand, thank you very much that you have been in person engaged as a mentor to our startups. We are really happy that we have this kind of powerful InsureTech network, which we can, let me say, um, uh, incorporate and, 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 and set up in our program so to help startups. And yes, we are really proud of the Batch 21, uh, which had, had his demo day on Monday, on December 6th. Uh, Within the last six months, we have supported 15 startups to develop and grow. We have supported them with more than 60 mentors from our network, on the one hand, on the corporate side, from the insurance companies, such as um, uh, AXA, Zurich, and others, and on the one other hand, with our powerful InsurTech network. And over six months, 15 startups with 60 mentors has developed 40 projects, um, 4.0, so to say, or 4.0 four projects um, um, to build concrete solutions and projects. And, and that was fantastic. And we had a great success story, collaboration story from um, um, Dear Employee with Alte Leipziger, uh, ALH Group, uh, which has built a corporation and project, a product up and running within three months. And that's also a great development, by the way, uh, over the last years, that the time you, it takes from a first contact to a proof of concept or contract um, is also, let me say, uh, is getting shorter. So, of course, the insurance industry needs sometimes to do IT projects and stuff, but the openness, the routines to do it got more and more better. And we see that also the life cycle of these projects uh, get shorter, and that's good. So uh, we are proud. 15 startups, 40 projects, and really products up and running in the market after six months. And by the way, from our point of view, this is a value proposition of our accelerator program, because we made a pretty clear decision that we only want to do one accelerator batch per year. Um, this will last for six months. Um, because we really want to create this kind of output. We have a higher output orientation. We do not want to do an accelerator program for eight to 10 weeks where it's only possible to do some PowerPoint fine tuning. We really want to help the startups to build um, um, partnerships and corporations and it works. And that's great to see because this creates value for both for the corporates who got who are getting new innovative products and services. And this creates value for the startups who has a new customer who can grow and scale. When you look at um, the different, um, I would say milestone, when you look at acceleration, you have some accelerator just focusing on deal flow, right? Providing mm -hmm. deal flow to corporates to enable them to find great opportunity for investment and partnership. And it's very much what I call basic batch making. Mm -hmm. The three, you know, three month acceleration program, which was mine, which was very, very intense, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, when you look at the retail industry mm -hmm. and other industry, that is a baseline, even tech companies, like, you know, the big tech companies, baseline is you have to do things iteratively in um, 12 weeks. So mm -hmm. my, my timeline was 12 to 14 weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, the interesting thing is when you apply those 12 to 14 weeks to our industry, which is insurance, it's true, it becomes a bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. So six months is absolutely a great um, timeline to go into what I would call commercialization, exactly. where you start bringing the ventures and introducing them to the real partners and giving them the tools and techniques to do that effectively. On your program, I, 
I teach business development and B2B sales. I also do sometimes a bit of investment advice, but it's about providing the real hardcore uh, understanding as to the pain point, right? You want to work with big corporates and it's not easy. And party in insurance is a risk-driven industry. So exactly. you have to be kinder uh, to understand why they are evaluating everything and trying to mitigate risk, right, Sebastian? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's also part of the game, right? On the one hand, the corporates want to innovate and the startups want to grow. But of course, sometimes they are speaking different languages and we need to kind of to, to be a translator or build the bridges between both worlds to understand the different needs and may, maybe also perspectives. And yeah, that's important. That's absolutely true. Startups want to grow and want to be fast the insurance company wants to avoid risks and also not only risk on, uh, let me say, an IT side, on an IT security side or data protection side, it's also about a reputational risk, right? They have a big brand and they have invested a lot of money and time to build um, a brand which is most often and the most often in the insurance industry trust related and of course you don't want to risk a trust you have created with a brand for a quick solution and for a quick project and yeah that's something um, you also need to consider if you bring together startups with the incumbents yeah so i saw on the insulab germany website that you have a new motto called, I would say, networking the insurance industry. Can you tell me what networking the insurance industry mean? Yeah, this, in fact, this was our very first claim, networking the insurance industry. InsurLab Germany was built in 2017, as you has mentioned, in, with 12 founding members. 12 founding members from the insurance industry, leading service providers, startups, and universities. As of now, we have grown to more than 90 members um, in Germany and Europe. And um, yeah, our business is really to build a strong and reliable network for the, let me say, parties and enthusiasts who want to work on innovation and digitalization. When Insulab Germany was built, it was sure, even though it's an initiative of the insurance industry, it won't be sufficient if in InsurLab Germany are only insurances involved. Uh, from scratch, um, the design of the initiative was that we need insurance companies on board, as well as startups, as well as IT providers, as well as consultancy companies, as well as universities, to bring together different competencies to work on an issue like, a topic like innovation and digitalization. And I think that's also worth to mention I think we all know digitalization is more than technology. It's also about cultural change, mind shift. It's about agility. It's also about customer centricity, put it, put it on a new level. And that's why it was so important from scratch to build InsurLab Germany as a network, as a network of different parties and uh, 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 let me say, uh, drivers and beside the member network we have created so it's an initiative um, uh, um, uh, an association out of 90 members right now uh, beside this member network we have also partner networks we are partnering with event and media partners who um, are able let me say to provide a stage to the startups we want to promote or um, that we are able to let me say spread our content and mission to the market. We also have uh, international hubs we are partnering with, for example, our friends from Sosa and Fintilvi in Tel Aviv, in London, in New York. We have uh, national partners, such big associations as Bitcom, which is a big IT um, network in, in Germany, which uh, is also really valuable for us. And we have a big uh, VC network where we are able to match also uh, VC capital uh, with the startups who wants to grow and scale. So networking the insurance industry is our claim and we take it really serious because this kind of community, so to say, is based on a network. And uh, we are really proud that we were able within the last four years to grow such a reliable network. Yes. And very, we see results good. out of it. Yes, That's absolutely. Great. 
Absolutely. And I think that takes me uh, into, you know, the, the point around understanding that now with the current situation, we are probably moving a little bit more digital. We are building digital ecosystems and those ecosystems yeah. need to involve uh, a variety of dis- different parties, different um, companies, uh, thoughts, uh, different individuals, which all together can bring values um, in very different ways, but all committed to achieve a very specific outcome. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think what, what you have mentioned is even the next level. I think what you have mentioned with the ecosystem topic really goes beyond insurances and startups. And um, that's why, um, you know, we've taken an, a an strategic action and cooperation with Köln Messe, which is a big trade fair organization in Germany and international trade fair organization to create Intronext, where you're also involved as an advisor of the very first I hour. was going to ask you, you know, <laughs> what about Intronext? Go on. <laughs> the question is, what's next? Intronext. Intronext. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, the, uh, and by setting up Intronext, uh, our, clear, our goal was clear that it's not only about insurances and startups, and tech companies, we also wanted to include the cross-industry dimension and the science dimension, because this is also from our side, let me say logical, if you want to develop innovation and digitalization for insurances in an ecosystem economy, you need to involve different parties. And that's great to see how cross-industry partners are joining Intronext for example, um, Garmin with uh, um, um, health devices such as uh, uh, smartwatches, or we had Volvo on stage, Volvo Cars Germany, which is partnering, for example, with Generali on um, innovative services. We were in contact with Lufthansa Systems, who was uh, uh, collaborating with the startup from us. And we see that if you're talking ecosystem business, you need to go beyond insurances and startups. And that's something we really push with Intronext, for example. And there's a, another kind of, let me say, community and, and activity level arising, which is great, which is just, let me say, uh, fascinating, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have so much to get done and um, we have so much opportunity. And as you said, when you start looking at digital ecosystem is now you know, removing the blurred line between industry, mm. automotive, healthcare, yeah. Um, property, real estate, and insurance emerging. Exactly. To serve one single customer, you need to actually understand the end-to-end customer experience and start yeah. blending uh, different services to fulfill that customer need. And no company can do that on their own. It's why digital ecosystem become important. It's why also understanding the service economy becomes important, shipping new business models, as well becomes yeah. important. And I think when you know we start talking about embedded insurance yeah. and as a service business model, all this uh, come into play and just start seeing the picture merging, right? Sebastian? Exactly, exactly. So ecosystem and embedded insurance is pretty close together, right? And, and needs each other, so to say. And I think there are a lot of game-changing moments on their way because um, on the one hand, insurance companies are able to grow within ecosystems. They're getting, let me say, new kind of sales and also service channels. But on the other hand, of course, there is a risk of losing the direct, uh, let me say, customer interface, right? Or the customer facing side. Um, But, you know, it's a lot of market development opportunities and to grow and scale uh, with that on the one hand for incumbents, but on the other hand, of course, also for the new players in the market, right? And I'm sure that the ecosystem topic will really challenge the industry, but also benefit the industry within the next years. And to be ecosystem ready, you need to talk a lot about technology, even though ecosystems are really customer centered and it should be have an, let me say, uh, ease of use for customers and the seamless integration to achieve this you need a lot of technology or enablement on the technology side because you know this you, you need this kind of technological interfaces apis and others to smoothly integrate services and products 
And I think this is also a big challenge for the industry so far. I mean, in the past, the insurance IT systems, there was one big, let me say, task. It need to be secured and it need to be in your, let me say, uh, uh, own uh, data center. And right now it's the total way around. You need to open up your interfaces, your um, your um, IT interactions. You need to be cloud ready, etc. That's really, let me say, a mind shift. And there's a lot to do to enable ecosystem uh, economy, right? Absolutely. I've been doing a bit of work from a technology viewpoint, uh, you know, with a very renowned blue company uh, to understand edge computing and quantum computing and how AI yeah. plays into it. And yes, you're, you're right. It's all about opening up yeah. and also creating new securities as you open yeah. up your company to others. You need to have the right understanding as to how everything connects together, whether it's the IoT and your big data and your AI yeah. and your, um, your ability to move fast therefore putting stuff on the edge and yeah. then needing the big computers to be able to process things very fast. And so when you start looking at our new ecosystem of tech, which are actually outside the organization because you're inviting all those young yeah. ventures, you have to rebuild completely differently. Yes. Absolutely. Completely differently. And I think you have mentioned also a really interesting aspect. On the one hand, you need to open up the old IT systems and data sets, so to say, you need to open them and make them accessible to the other service partners. But on the other hand, and that's maybe even more challenging, as an insurance company, you need to work with a lot of new data sets because IoT is there. Yeah, you know, you have of um, right now you've got new kind of data inputs and devices who deliver live, uh, not lifetime, real time data, right? And this is a totally new game for insurances as well. On the one hand, it's a great opportunity. On the other hand, it's a challenge because you need to get to the data, of course, GDPR compliant. You need to do the right interpretation of the data insights, right? Uh, and, and that's um, an amazing challenging. But it's really a great chance based on IoT and real-time data to also, let me say, push another, from my point of view, really important mind shift. It's about coming from the, let me say, cost recovery to the life uh, prevention or life companion and, and prevention services. Because I think this is a huge opportunity also for an image shift of the insurance industry to come from the financial institution who is doing cost recovery, claim recovery, to a life companion who helps you to avoid risks, to be more active in your daily life and more maybe more healthy, more mobile. And this is also only enabled by data and by a lot of smart insure techs who can help you with that. Absolutely, absolutely. So that takes me to, to another question, uh, Sebastian. As we look at InsureNext and all the great ventures you've been working with during the course of the past four years, what are the patterns and the trends we should be watching out for as we move into the next few years? That's a good question, right? And it's not easy to answer this without use the usage of a lot of buzzwords. <laughs> of course. We have to do with it. Let's yeah. do buzzword. <laughs> buzzword time. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, if, if I'm ob observing the market, I think what we have seen over the last years, we have moved forward from the customer facing apps to the more back end oriented services. So it's about, let me say, automation, it's about uh, artificial intelligence where you need to, or where you are able to, let me say, reorganize your back office. That's the one thing. On the other hand, we have talked about IoT and let me say uh, big data analytic capabilities and um, uh, stuff. Then we are of course talking about the ecosystem topic, like we have said before, how can we integrate services from a customer oriented perspective into an ecosystem model. We need to talk about open insurance, open data approaches, right? On the other hand, beside this technological, let me say necessary, uh, this technology based um, 
basics. We also need to talk about sustainability in the insurance industry because this has also different drivers and motivation factors, right? Sustainability, uh, let me say, is from the on the one per perspective from a carbon footprint of an insurance company to the role of an insurance company as financial institution, an investor, or also, let me say, enabler of new sustainable business models. And I think that the insurance industry is facing there another huge um, yeah, responsibility to, to, to support this global and uh, the topic uh, from there, let me say, kind of way. Sustainability is going to become um, a big, uh, we said buzzword, but um, it will become a big area of focus as we move to next few years because everybody is trying to work out what their sustainability yeah. strategy is, whether it's personal lines, commercial lines. Yeah. I think what I see, Sebastian, is a lot of questions coming to us around ESG, so environmental social and governance metrics. Mm -hmm. And so how you do start aligning your corporate strategy, not doing CSR, it's not CSR anymore, mm -hmm. but aligning your corporate strategy mm -hmm. imperatives to how you are going to improve the environment and reduce emission, how you're going to become more socially inclined. And insurance is quite good on the social front, I think usually, mm -hmm. but now the, 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 the theme is around people's safety. How you make your client make sure that if they send an employee on a roll or rig, you know, they can avoid any fatality mm -hmm. or the future of work. You know, yeah. how do you allow people to work from home, work from the office? How do you fit within this new mm -hmm. working culture? Yeah. Right. So it's about the workers. Right. Uh, and then when you start looking at governance, it's around finance. It's about strategy. It's about looking at your business model and how all this stuff, when you have yeah. to become leaner, better, whilst um, becoming as well sustainable. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, how do you do that with the right governance structure? Exactly. So it's a big, so to say, playing field. It has multi dimensions. And um, this is a big task for the industry also to work on this within the next years. But what should I say with intro next? <laughs> we are also um, giving this topic a stage and a different perspective. And that's why it's great that we can, as in Schulab Germany with Köln Messe also, let me say, enable and educate the industry to work on this topic also on an international level, because um, I think it's clear sustainability is not a local issue, it's really a global issue. And uh, I'm really excited to be a part of this kind of movement and um, to create something for this topic and the, the way, the path that we need to go right now. Um, yeah. Seb to do. Sebastian, when you, um, so Sebastian, when you look at, the, the world we are in. And let's just now talk to the startup community, scale-up community, you know, mm -hmm. when and if they were want, if they wanted to come and engage with InsuLab Germany, what are the metrics you are looking for to say, yeah, you could actually be a good partners for our partners? That's a good point. So um, on the one hand, the, it should be clear that if you want to do insurance-related business in Germany, InsurLab Germany is the place to go and the very first address you should, let me say, uh, attend or contact. Um, of course, we, we got a lot of uh, introductions from startups and a lot of information. It's also our function or our responsibility to be a good filter, so to say. Um, we have a lot of companies who trust in us that we are, let me say, that we do a kind of pre-selection of startups who are who have a good fit for our members and the market and who are able, let me say, to collaborate and deliver over time. So on the one hand, we are clearly the first address to, to contact if you want to do business. On the other hand, this is part of our job to also filter and pre-select um, startups. Um, who are, have the, let me say, um, ability 
or the, the good preconditions to work with the um, companies that we are representing. Um, so um, what are we looking for? On the one hand, it could be startups that which call themselves, I'm an insure tech company, I have a platform for insurance as a service, I have an artificial intelligence toolkit for fraud prevention, so let's talk. This is more or less easy, there we have to check two or three points like or market development or uh, maturity level and, and let me say other capabilities, that's easy. And then we are pretty fast to, to match them. But on the other hand, it's also part of our job, not only to find the insurtechs who want to work with insurance companies, it's also really interesting and challenging to find the right technology startups that have developed a product or service that maybe was not invented for insurance, but makes a lot of sense and brings a lot of value to the insurance value chain from the information for and customer information and sales process to the back end and stuff. And that's also pretty um, exciting to translate technology such as, you know, wearable devices, chatbots, voice recognition tools or others into the insurance industry. And that's also part of our job to make, to build these bridges and, and make the translation. How can we translate IoT, artificial intelligence into valuable insurance use cases? And if you have a, a company doing something like that, we are also a really good, let me say, address to come. Wonderful. And so now looking at your your uh, your partners, insurance partners, you mentioned you have 90 partners between insurance venture vendors, as well as um, university coming together as part of the network of InsurLab Germany. If you are talking to them now and asking them to do something different in the next few years to help accelerate growth through startup ventures, what would be your recommendations? So on the one hand, the, the good news is if they are part of InsurLab Germany, there's the management attention and the first, let me say, willingness to be open and to collaborate. This is a meaningful precondition. They need to be avail, uh, aware about startup uh, uh, capabilities and, and uh, options. That's the first point. The other point is the corporates need to, let me say, um, announce something we call multiplicators. So we need, let me say, really some kind of uh, account manager into the insurance companies who are our first lending pet for the insurance company. So which are the people we need to inform and keep informed about the accelerator program, workshops, offerings and stuff. So they also need, they do not only need to join Intulab Germany with a management commitment, they also need to, let me say, uh, provide dedicated resources on the one hand, on the um, um, employee uh, um, employee uh, level. On the other hand, uh, it's also really meaningful that they do not only have time, they also need some money to invest into pilots, proof of concept with startups. So we see if a startup, if a corporate wants to work efficiently with us, they need to provide people who are in contact with us, who are in charge to multiplicate our offerings and communicate them in the corporation. And they also need uh, uh, time and money to work on the startup cases, the technologies that we provide. If you have this kind of preconditions, management, attention and willingness to change resources in, in form of uh, people and, and uh, let me say budget, um, that's really important to get value out of Inshulab Germany. Very nice. Sebastian, what would be your last word of wisdom for our listener today? It's important to see digitalization is not a one-hit wonder. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Um, it's uh, a way beyond technology also into cultural change. Um, collaboration is key from our perspective, join forces to work on complex and new topics. And what should I say? We are more than happy if we can help and support with that. Today, I was talking to Sebastian Pitzler. Thank you, Sebastian, for being with us. If people want to get in touch with you, what should they do? Reach out. 
we are linked in visit our website um, insurelab minus germany.com or we are more than happy to get in contact and uh, of course sabine we are so well connected if they contact you and know, uh, know you already i think we will also find together exactly and you can find sebastian for sure on linkedin on pitzler exactly voilà. <laughs> sebastian pitzler i'm there in Schulab germany as well and yeah, we are looking forward to grow and extend our network constantly. That's the power of ecosystems and accelerators. Thank you, Sebastian, for your time today. Thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity. Pleasure.